Hey champions, it's Tuesday. I hope you're having a great day. I'm really excited about the news I have for you today. Uh, I'm nervous about announcing it, but at the same time, extremely excited. So let's get into it. So first off, um, I'm trying to think. I don't think any new videos came out yesterday. As for the Patreon packages, I am working on them. I think I put up a post on Patreon saying this, but it took me forever to put together the packages and I'm still working on them. So trying to get them out as soon as possible being in the next day or two if you're a patreon member i'll be leaving a message on uh patreon about when they get shipped out so you don't have to worry too much about those all right let's get into the exciting news so let's announce the 2021 championship uh i mentioned it before but this we're finally wanting to move forward with it uh the ontario government has announced that they are putting in procedures so that we don't have to see another lockdown and with that that gives me enough confidence that i think we'll move forward with this i'm excited because the championship was a lot of fun last time i'm really excited to see everyone come back together compete and show their love for genesis and show off everything they've been doing uh since covid started and how they've been keeping themselves uh sharp and strong in this game so i'm really really excited about that i'm really excited to see how much second edition hopefully levels off the competitive space and we can see more people competing at the top tier because the cards are accessible to them so that's happening more details will come as we start putting everything together so i'll let you know we have booked a venue it is we've had one set aside just in case everything works out we have a space but now that the game's grown a lot we are debating do we need to get a bigger space do we need to get a space that's closer to uh a hub so that it's easier to travel to so some of what i'm looking for is what's the interest are you interested in competing in the championship if you are then just let me know so we can understand do we have the capacity we need or do we need to expand that capacity uh so if you're interested without knowing what's on the line and what we're going to do, if you just think you would want to be there, uh, or even when it's going to be, then let me know because we can get an idea. But we always try to host our championship around the company's anniversary, which is uh, the company's anniversary is November 23rd. Uh, so this year, it will be around that time. Uh, it'll always be m mid to late November every year. So if... Uh, that's happening um we're getting together all the promos all the description all that's gonna roll out as we have more information i'll be first announcing it or making information available in the vlogs and then giving it out to everyone because i want to give heads up to people who watch the vlogs. so thank you if you watch these uh okay so that's the championship we are gonna have have it this year uh, and we'll have to figure out what we need to do for our, our friends that are traveling in from the U.S. Uh, how to make sure that you are able to participate because now we're going to have all these rules around. You have to show proof of vaccination. Uh, so that's happening. Let me know if you're interested. Uh, that's the big takeaway. Are you interested in joining the championship? So let's do our deep dive. We're going to be talking about Call to the Bones. Uh I'm, I'm cur currently going through this process of just cycling through all the different affiliations. So do J. Lara, Bellum, Thymos, Axon Chaos, and then just keep on circling down, down uh, until we get to all, all the cards. So let's talk about Call to the Bones. Let's start with that artwork. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so there's actually some fun stories behind just the artwork itself. Uh, it was... The original concept for this was that it was going to deal damage to a creature, kind of like Dark Corruption. It was originally intended to be Dark Corruption, but um, Philip did this artwork and there were three skeletons in the artwork. And I was like, all right, Lionel, you have to go back and redesign this card. So he redesigned it and that's where we get the current version of Call to the Bones was uh, it was, I don't know, it grew, it got much better. Uh, I think the card's great. Uh, there's a lot of synergies with it. And I I underestimated how powerful this card was going to be. Uh, and I'm happy that I did because it gave players a much more interesting play space. 
So let's look at what this card does. For 5 chi, you got the awareness of left, right, forward, at chaos only. Uh, Cult of Bones at action speed. You um, you conjure three times skeleton warriors for 13 or. So conjuring is being able to, it's like beckoning, but it's taking it from outside of the game, from your um, subconscious and bringing it into play. So you're t taking a skeleton from your subconscious, bringing it into a spot adjacent to you, facing the same direction you inserted. It. It's just like beckoning. However, the three acts comes into the fact that you're doing this three times. You're doing it on the initial cast and then you're repeating this two more times. Uh, allowing you to get three skeleton warrior tokens absolutely great card i think there's actually a gameplay video you can find of alex just destroying me because of his ability to play with this card really really well this card did get changed from its original wording which was just place three skeleton warrior tokens on a spot adjacent to you facing any direction uh facing the same direction as you and then exert them um the reason why we had to change the wording was because there was two ways to interpret this. One was each skeleton warrior got to be placed on one of the spots in Cult of the Bones Awareness, uh, where the, uh, or the other interpretation is that all three skeleton warriors had to be placed onto the same spot in Cult of the Bones Awareness. Uh, and that interpretation makes up made it that it wasn't clear to every single player on how to play this. Uh, this there were a lot of recommendations from the future leaguers on how to fix this, but I think the recommendation, uh, the uh, path we took is a little bit more scalable uh, so that we can do, you know, conjure 3x skeleton warriors, conjure 10x skeleton warriors. We can use the same wording, uh, just change that number. And as long as the concept stays the same, then uh, the, uh, the mechanics of everything will be good. Now, the one thing I do kind of wish I had changed was, since it is now a conjure, uh, getting rid of the awareness of Call to the Bones and just allowing you to back in on any spot adjacent to you compared to just the spots in Call to the Bones awareness. But that's uh, going to be one of those nifty little quirks that Call to the Bone has that other conjure abilities don't. If you look at Erica's bi Conjure Baihu, it doesn't bound it to Erica's awareness. It just binds it to uh, a spot adjacent to you. So that's the way I would probably look at doing it in the future. Call to Bones did get a promo version and Patreon. Uh, I lost the file for the <laughs> promo, so I ended up having to grab it from our uh, the printing company that we use their proof uh, before I send things off for print. They want us to verify that everything looks good. So I got a little screenshot of that proof. Uh, the cool thing about the Patreon Call to the Bone promo was it was actually given to players before Rays even launched. It was an early access promo where everyone got Skeleton Warriors that month and anyone who was on the $20 tier or higher got Call to the Bones itself. So they were able to get their copies of Call to the Bones months before the set came out. Uh, so that's one of the cool little perks about Patreon. It allows you to get some cards much, much earlier than others. I know for Origins, we already have our lineup of promos set up so that before the set even launches, you have something really cool in your hand for Origins. All right, so now that we know what the card does, let's go back to the artwork. I mean, it's really awesome you get this, uh, the three Skeleton Warriors, and they're kind of showing up on the left, right, and forward of Core. I think it ties everything together, and it's just a great piece, a great card. Uh, if you're playing Chaos, it's definitely something that I recommend running, especially if you're a fighter type or a uh, summon or caster type that is uh, getting close into combat. This can really muck up the board and uh, slow your opponent down, giving you space to breathe and execute your strategy as you need. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope it gave you more insight into this card, more appreciation for how powerful this card is. And uh, again, if you're interested in joining the championship, which will happen in uh, mid to late November, then uh, let me know so I can gauge where we where our venue should be. Do we need to upgrade our venue or are we good with the one we currently have? All right, that's everything for today, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye. I totally forgot to mention this, but tonight is Exploring the Library. It's a live stream with Alex. I don't know what we're going to talk about, and it's going to be fun because it's always fun. Uh, so if that's something uh, you're interested in, that's going to be happening tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and we'll be talking uh, about something game design related. If you have a topic that you want us to talk about, let us know. And uh, 
here you go you can go back to checking out your uh, card deep dive thing Thank you.